How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a uh, Saturday night. It is the Earth Master out here. 10.22 p.m. That's California time. May 3rd, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 1.1 across the California area. Got a lot going on here across the plates right now. Look at this. A lot of activity stirring up globally, including uh, some further activity down south here where that seven-pointer came in. South of Argentina. Got a number of earthquakes here in the last hour or so, including a 5.3 and a 4.9. Things are on a roll out here, so to speak, across the uh, entire globe. A lot of plate movement happening as we speak. So let's take a look here at the uh, North American area. Got uh, a pretty decent earthquake here along the oil fields of Texas. I know uh, a lot of people covering this earthquake. I see a lot of storm chasers covering earthquake activity all of a sudden. Well, you know, it, it's a big earthquake uh, out there around Pecos, Texas. And, of course, um, something like that would bring in a lot of clicks and views. Um, but the thing is, with this earthquake activity here in the oil fields, we've seen it happen a lot. Uh, as far as these five-pointers, they occur every year, maybe every other year across the area of Texas. Um, and these larger earthquakes here that we've seen tonight, the 5.4, can create some damage out there. Fortunately, it's away from any populated areas. But uh, say, for example, you know, we had a massive amount of oil fields around uh, Midland and we started to see some five pointers out there. Well, I think in that case, you know, uh, if damage and whatnot was uh, happening, there would be some investigations going on there and probably a halt to the oil field operations out there across the area if it were to happen. Similar to what we've seen up here in Oklahoma. A few years back, a 5.7 struck up here uh, around some oil fields that created some big time damage. And uh, the government got involved to put a halt to uh, some of the oil field operations. And uh, since then, uh, earthquake activity went down. So, uh, you know, it's there's a very strong relationship between the earthquake activity and the gas and oil fields out here. That's a fact. Earthquake activity has increased dramatically ever since the oil boom out there across the uh, area of the Permian Basin. So there are some older fault systems out here, but this is not associated with that. There's a, you know, a massive amount of oil fields where this 5.4 struck here today. And, um, uh, you know, it's it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to uh, see the relationship between the two. Uh, just up to the north here, a number of oil fields. It looks like these are some older ones uh, out there. Some solar farms uh, just to the north. Uh, coincidentally, some you know some uh, solar farms to the north. Um, but uh, you know, there's there's a, a lot of oil fields out here. If you look, you know, not only on the satellite view, but um, sometimes they show it here on the maps. Uh, from the USGS about the oil fields, uh, certain names. But anyway, there's a, a lot going on out there right now. Strain is high out here against the North American plate. And the areas of interest there, the oil fields, are, are getting hit. So keep an eye. You know, obviously, I don't think we're going to see anything larger out here. We could see some further five-pointers out here across other areas of the oil fields. But, uh, I, you know, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Um, I think the largest out here was a 5.7 or so, but a 5.4, it can do some damage, right? Um, California moving as well. Southern California out around the Garlock Fault Shear Zone and also down here across the Brawley Seismic Zone. A number of earthquakes out there in the last hour. Um, looks like a 2.7 there along, along the Garlock Fault Shear Zone as well. This is a little concerning because... It's been an area of heightened activity here recently. We've seen a, a decent swarm of earthquake activity. Almost 200 earthquakes here in the last 30 days along the Garlock Fault shear zone. Uh, now that interacts here with the San Andreas Fault. This kind of acts as a spring here between the movement of the two plates. And I feel though that this is under quite a bit of strain. And if we see a larger earthquake activity event here on this fault system, that could trigger the San Andreas fault out here. It's been, this has been ongoing here for, uh, I think, a little bit over, over a month time period. And uh, it's just continuing here. Um, so I think it's leading up to something bigger. Not 100% cer certain, but uh, uh, got to watch that. 
Garlock Fault Shear Zone and the San Andreas Fault uh, play a major part in um, possibly producing an earthquake, a uh, large earthquake activity event out here. So uh, watch that closely. Some activity there along the, looks like the Elsinore Fault chart starting to show a little bit of activity further north here of Marietta. Uh, very small earthquakes. That follows um, some events earlier in the month. You guys remember that, uh, well, I, I think it's from last month here, that 4.0 earthquake that struck down here. Uh, actually, it was 5.2 that originally started and then followed up by a number of aftershocks, including that 4-pointer. Uh, total tally down there from that earthquake sequence, well over 300 earthquakes, 374 earthquakes there. Um, across the area of the Elsinore Fault. So, you know, Southern California has been rocking and rolling, and all signs here pointing towards something bigger happening out there along the plate boundary. It makes sense. Any of these other fault systems here could go, uh, but the area of interest is going to be the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault that is capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake. Uh, San Francisco, unbelievably quiet. I don't know what's going on up there. Um, I find it rather odd. Look at the last seven days or so around the San Francisco Bay. Only five earthquakes. Of uh, Looks like some various magnitudes, but uh, that's, you know, very odd. And the last couple events was up here at the northern end of the Hayward Fault course the Hayward Fault is well overdue for some large earthquake activity and that has been uh, an area of study recently. Uh, it's got a high chance of seeing some large earthquake activity at any time and that's interesting that we had the last events there uh, in the last week there across the northern end of the Hayward Fault that runs through a highly populated area of the East Bay and uh, man uh, it's just got to watch this. It's been awfully quiet there across the Bay Area recently. The Clear Lake Volcanic Field. This is uh, some hydrothermal plants out there. Nothing nothing new. This always happens. If you look at the last 30 days, uh, we got an, an incredible amount. 1,694 earthquakes out there across the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. One would think that there's an impending volcanic eruption out there, but that's not the case. That uh, is some hydrothermal plants utilizing the heated in uh, heated areas below to produce energy there's a whole process involved in that so and also it includes earthquakes uh, one earthquake there along the um, akama fault nothing new to report there uh, it's been somewhat active but nothing big uh, there across the southern end of the cascadia couple smaller earthquakes there of 2.2 and a 1.5 i do want to double check the trimmer map out here this evening uh, 25 epicenters of trimmer across the Oregon area. Nothing big going on there for now. But uh, goodness, we've got to watch things out here. They've they've been uh, ramping up out here. Things are in motion. And that's when things can really start popping out here. There's that six-pointer from this morning. Some further activity there uh, this evening along the Izu Trench. 5.1. Another further earthquake there around the Japan area. All this activity straining the Nankai Trough right here. It's a major subduction zone. Starts right about here. Of course, this entire area right here is very dangerous in terms of producing large earthquakes. And uh, uh, But this area specifically, I feel, is coming up soon for maybe this year's mega quake. I, I, I got a 50, maybe 60% chance there thinking that... Uh, this is where we'll see our next 8.0 or larger earthquake take place. The Nankai Trough, very uh, hazardous area. Also got a little bit of movement there across the Aleutian Trench. 4.7 earthquake coming in there earlier this evening. Fairly decent earthquake. Nothing big going on. Of course, that's another major player in uh, producing large earthquakes. New Zealand got... Uh, a couple earthquakes along the Kermadec Islands region. One deep earthquake there across the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Subduction zone here. Of course, got the Hikurangi subduction zone as well. That's, uh we're watching pretty closely. Nothing major going on, but again, with things in motion, 
Uh, we can look at some larger activity down there as well. Uh, look at this. That's crazy. Just a large amount of earthquake activity. You see what we got here for a total tally. Almost 50 earthquakes of various magnitudes, uh, including the largest, a 7.4. That marks 2025's third largest earthquake. 6.4, the largest aftershock so far. Um, as far as any major migration goes, I'm still kind of waiting on the Chile area. Uh, there is a number. <laughs> that's crazy. I just spoke that into existence there. 3.8 coming in. Looks like they're to the central area of the Peru Chile Trench. Pretty decent cluster going on there. But uh, uh, with this movement down south here, I was expecting some further larger scale movement up north along that subduction zone. It has yet to uh, materialize there, but uh, we'll see what happens. A lot going on here though. Look at that, all the newer rings there and the white circles indicating that newer activity. Got uh, a bunch of movement going on, so we need to be on guard here overnight. Nothing going on across the Atlantic Ocean for now. Space weather activity, well, fairly calm there. Uh, we're dipping down into the B flare category, it looks like right now. B 8.0. That is, uh, that's pretty low. So let's take a look here at sunspot number 4079. It is a massive area out there, very visible on the earth-facing side of the sun. But let's take a look here at complexity models. Uh, it looks like earlier today, a little bit of development going on here south. Uh, and also up north here, but I'm um, still a little skeptical on that, whether we're going to see any major solar flares from that. If it was highly dynamic in terms of complexity, man, that thing would probably be popping X flares off like crazy. But um, right now it looks uh, halfway stable. Going to have to watch that, though. Uh, the overall flare threat shows a 5% chance for X flare, M flare at 35 uh, like I say, it's one of the larger, one of the more larger uh, sunspot regions that I've seen in quite a long time. But uh, without the magnetic complexity, there's really not a whole lot of, uh, you know, potential for some stronger flaring. Looks like a G1 class storm predicted here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It says May 3rd. That's UTC time. So that would be right now. I don't see it coming in. Looks pretty quiet there across the board, though. Storm Prediction Center uh, had a little thunderstorm just south of me here. Pretty neat. Seen a lot of lightning uh, over the next couple days there. Got the uh, uh, severe weather to the west and east here of the Southern Plains, but it looks like that returns here uh, on day three. It looks like Texas getting back in on the severe weather potential. Uh, but we'll check that out here as we get uh, a little bit closer to that time period. Uh, look at the total accumulated precipitation runs here. We're going to run this at least till oh, May 12th here, it looks like. California, somewhat wet out here, but I think that's from that thunderstorm here, it looks like, this evening. Yeah, it is, but after, uh, after that's pretty dry out here across the West Coast. More rain across Oklahoma and Texas, Colorado as well, and the South, and Florida. So uh, that's very typical here for this time of year. All right, folks, uh, we'll continue to watch things out here. Uh, keep an eye on Southern California, getting these dots out here in various areas around the San Andreas Fault. Got to keep a close eye on that. We'll be back here in the morning to uh, provide some updates on anything that takes place here overnight. Make sure you guys subscribe, like the video, and uh, we will see you guys back out here for the Sunday morning update. Stay safe.